Hey guys, in this section we're going to, we're going to set up our template and we're going to use Bootstrap. If you haven't used Bootstrap before, it's basically an HTML5 framework um, that gives us a lot of, um, for instance, a lot of CSS classes that we can use to um, style our, our website or our template. And if you go to getbootstrap.com and let's, for instance, click on CSS, and we have all these things over here that we can use. We have um, tables. You can see that to have a table look like this nice and clean, we just need to include certain classes. Here's a striped table, so we would include this, this table striped. Um, we have forms, okay, so some good looking forms with HTML snippets, and that's what we'll be using. Um, buttons, okay, so we have different kinds of buttons here, different colors and all we need to do is include this HTML. Now to be able to use it we need to get the, the bootstrap um, CSS file as well as an index file. Now there's actually some examples we can use or some sample templates if we go to getting started and over here if we click on examples there's some pre-made templates we can use and the one we're going to use is this narrow jumbotron. If we click on it we see an example. Now we're not going to use this big jumbotron heading or this text. We're going to put our application right in this area. All right. Now there's no way, as far as I know, to just download this template. You have to actually copy the code. So what I'm going to do is go to the directory that we're going to build our app in, which we need to create, is in the C drive, XAMP, htdocs, and we want to create a new folder called C Manager. All right, now in there we want to create a CSS folder. And that's really it. That's all we need. Um, we need to create a file, an index.php file, which will basically contain all our HTML for our home page. All right, and that's all we need for now. So we want to get the HTML from this template. So view the demo and then if you do control U, you'll be able to see all the source code. All right, so we're going to copy all this. You can do a control A to, to highlight everything. And we're going to paste that into our index.php file. Okay, now if we save this and go to our site, which is at localhost slash C manager. We have all that all that uh, content from the template, but we, we don't have our CSS file, so we need to get that. So if we go back to the source code for that template, and you should see this these two CSS files, um, bootstrap.min.css and jumbotron narrow.css. We want to get both of these. So I'm going to click on this one. And I'm going to do Control A and then copy all this CSS and go to our folder, our CSS folder, and create a new file, a new text document called bootstrap.min.css. All right, and now what we want to do is open that up and then paste all that CSS in. All right, and it gets pasted in like one really long line. That's fine and we want to save it. Okay, now we want to go back to the HTML source and get this Jumbotron narrow CSS. All right, now we can copy all this and put that inside of a new CSS file called Jumbotron narrow.css. Okay, we want to open that up and then just paste that in, save it, and close it. We won't need to deal with these two CSS files. Well, actually, we might need to add a style or two to the Jumbotron one, but we'll never have to touch this bootstrap file. All right, so if we go back to our site and, re and reload, we're still not seeing any difference. That's because we need to fix the link to the CSS files. If you look, we can actually delete some of this. We can delete the favicon thing, uh, the author description. We don't need that stuff. All right, we'll change the title 
to C Manager, and we'll, this is going to be the home page or the dashboard. All right, now this is the link to the Bootstrap CSS file, and you can see we have this, these lines and dots, and then dist, and we don't need that. All we need is to point it to CSS slash Bootstrap. Now this jumbotron doesn't have the CSS in front of it, so we need to include it. All right, and then this these comments we can get rid of. Make this look a little neater. All right, so now if we save that and reload, now we have the template. All right, so we want to um, let's change the project name and the links. All right, so we want to change. We want the link for home to be index.php. We're not going to have an about page. We're going to have one other link in the menu, and that's going to be to add a customer. So add customer, and the link is going to be add underscore customer.php. Project name, let's replace that with C manager, we'll call it store C manager. Okay, so if you save that. Okay, now we have our header. So let's get rid of this jumbotron and this text down here. So what we want to do is uh, we're using uh, the Bootstrap grid system, which uses classes uh, for the grids. All right, so we want to delete the jumbotron, which would be this the opening div class of Jumbotron to this div. So we'll get rid of that and then save it and reload. Okay, so now we just have these, this text that we want to get rid of. So from okay, so we want to get rid of uh, we only want one of these column divs. So we'll get rid of this from here to here and then we're going to change this it's using six columns now it's the full template is 12 columns across so this is only half the template so we want to change this to 12 and it'll it'll let us use the entire width of the template all right and then we just want to get rid of that content keep the div all right and i'm just going to create an h2 tag it says customers and then save that all right, so now we just have that H2 tag. So we can add in our table and do all that stuff. So let's do that. Let's grab, uh, let's go back to get bootstrap. And under components, I'm sorry, under CSS, we want tables. All right, so let's use the stripe tables. If I copy this, and you should have some basic knowledge in HTML. I'm not going to go over uh, how to how to code HTML because you probably should know that, uh, especially if you're you're looking to learn MySQL. Uh, HTML is quite simple compared to learning about databases and, and dynamic applications. All right, so we have a table. Let's create a table row, and this is going to be our heading row. All right, so we want to do a uh, table header, which will be customer name. Well, that should be th. All right, so after customer name, we're going to have email. And then the address. And then we're going to have just a blank table header here because this is where the edit button is going to go. All right, so let's go ahead and create another row. And this is going to be TD for columns. And I'm just going to put placeholders here. Um, So the customer name. Customer name, customer 
what is it? Email will go here. And then address. And this will be a link to the edit button. This will be the edit button. So let's go to Bootstrap and click on buttons. And I want to use this white button, which is the default right here. So basically, I'm not going to actually have it as a button, though. It's going to be a link. But we can still have it look like this if we use this class. So let's copy this class. And let's say a href. This is going to go to edit customer.php. And we're going to add a get variable here. It's going to have an ID, which will be equal to whatever the ID is. I'm just going to put one for now, but it will be dynamic. Um, what else? And then we want to add the class. The text will just say edit. All right. So let's save this. All right, so we have our headings. And we'll, we'll, what we're going to do is select all the, the data in the customers table, loop through it, and print out each name through every loop iteration. All right, so that'll give us a, a lot of um, rows. Let's see, the edit button is a little too big. We can use this class, where is it? Right here, button small, if we want to make it a little smaller. And by the way, we have a really good um, responsive website series. Um, and it has a lot of um, information on Bootstrap. We actually build a custom Bootstrap template. So I'd highly recommend that through Eduonix. All right, so if we go ahead and reload, now it's a little smaller. All right, so that's basically the static HTML. Um, I'm not going to do the query in, in, in the database select in this video. Uh, we'll do that in the next one. But what I do want to do is just finish our file structure. All right, so let's just create some files here. We need add customer. Make sure you use the PHP extension. Edit customer.php and we want delete customer.php right, I think that should be good let's just double check with the finished app um, okay we need our includes with our database file we don't need this JavaScript file with the bootstrap JavaScript so don't worry about that So let's create a new folder called includes. And then inside of that, we want our database file. All right, so let's open that up. And we're going to connect to our database, which I showed you in the last section. It's not a lot of code at all. So. Um, in PHP, we, we want to use two forward slashes for comments, or at least for one line comments. So connect to database. It's just good practice to have uh, comments placed really well so that in case um, other developers work on your program or just to remind you what it does, it's good to comment things. All right, so we're going to create a bunch of variables here. We're going to create a variable called DB host, and that's going to be equal to localhost. And we're going to create a DB name variable, which will be equal to the database name. In our case, is going to be store. Okay, we're going to use the same database that we've been working with this whole series. Um, DB user. If you've been following along, it's probably root. And then the password. So db pass. 
my case is just one, two, three, four. All right, so those are our variables. Now we want to create the object. And by the way, the I on MySQLI stands for improved. All right, so let's create a variable called MySQLI and equal that to a new object. So new MySQLI, and then we want to pass in our parameters. Uh, so we want to pass in DB host, and the order of this is important as well. User pass and name. All right, and then we just want to handle our errors. So we're going to say if MySQLI connect So this is just going to say if there's any errors then we want to print f Actually, you know what? We don't need to, to print F. Let's just echo out. Um, let's see. We'll echo. This connection failed. And we want to concatenate um, the error. So MySQL, MySQL I connect. Error. All right, and then we'll do exit. Actually, we'll say die, which will just cut everything off. All right, so let's save that, and let, we need to include it into our main index file. So way up at the top, you want to do this before you do any kind of HTML. So include, include slash database.php and then we need to close off our our PHP block alright so let's save that and go ahead and reload so we'll get an undefined variable MySQLI actually wait a minute this shouldn't have a dollar sign alright so it's not it's displaying correctly that means that we're connected let's just give it a test let's go ahead and change the database name to store three which there is not one so let's reload and now you can see that there's an unknown database so that means that we are connected to our database we could change the name and we'll get an error saying access denied and that would happen if we change the password as well all right, so everything is good. Everything, we're connecting fine. So that's really all we need to do with this file. We don't really need to do anything else. So let's close that up. All right, so in the next video, what we'll do is turn this placeholder into our actual customers. We'll do the select query. Uh, we're gonna do a table join because we have the customer info and then we have the address which is in another table so we'll do the, the join which is nothing that we haven't done we're just going to do it from within PHP